Lou Lennart is a guy that I met through David Mamet. He's 93 years old, you know, ready to kick both of our butts. He was a Marine fighter pilot on Okinawa, um, flying Corsairs, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, when the war was over, I'm going to give you the long version of no, this thing, you know, because whatever it was, he comes back to L.A., but he's aware uh, in 46, 47, 48 that Israel is about to be born. The nation is a, the British mandate is about to end, and he's aware that five Arab armies are massing, you know, or, you know, have vowed to wipe Israel out before it even gets started, you know. So uh, he volunteers. He says, I got to help. I got to somehow get over there and help. Um, so um, he actually wound up, if you were a veteran in those days, you were able to, through war surplus, you could buy an airplane for 5,000 bucks. And there were, so he did, he bought an airplane, which is kind of a, a, a sidebar, but he managed to, to get over there and, uh, and they had no, nothing. The, they had nothing. The Israeli, no there Air was Force, no Air nothing. Force. He was it. He, he was it and a few <laughs> other people, a few other You're Americans right, so and South Africans. And there were no Israeli fighter pilots who had any combat experience. A couple of them had trained under the British, but they'd never fought in combat or anything. So, and they had no airplanes. Nothing. So, um, they, the only way they could get them, and by the way, the, the uh, uh, Egyptians had been given 50 brand new Spitfires, great combat airplane, won the Battle yeah, of Britain, yeah, right, yeah. By, given them, uh, by the British to the Egypt. Anyway, so the, the short version of the story is Lou flies to Czechoslovakia with a few other people under the, under the aegis of the Haganah, the, the, the forerunner of the Israeli Defense Forces, and uh, they got their hands on six screwed up Messerschmitts. Messerschmitts, right? Messerschmitts with Heinkel bomber en uh, engines. These were German aircraft. These were old German fighters, but they were <laughs> mismatched, wrong propellers, wrong, and sold by the Czechs, who were just desperate to, For some to, cash, uh, yeah. to uh, do it. So, anyway, uh, Lou is there, uh, Ben Gurion, David Ben Gurion, first president of uh, Premier or president of Israel announces the formation of the state, and on that day, State of Israel, five Arab armies, Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria, Syria. invade to wipe out. Um, so Lou is in Czechoslovakia trying to get these planes with about five or six other pilots. And uh, he finally succeeds in getting back, and the Egyptian army is kind of moving up the coast, up the coast road towards Tel Aviv, and distances there, that was amazing to me when I got to Israel, how short everything, I mean, it's not like from here to Kansas, it's like from New York to, to Weehawken, you know, to Weehawken, <laughs> you know, right? The, the, right. So, um, so they, they still, they just barely got these four planes together, four pilots who've never flown in combat except Lou, and he's planning to attack this base in the desert in Sinai, Egyptian base, the next morning. Suddenly a jeep roars onto this little old airfield where they are, and uh, it's the guy who is def the Jewish Defense Army, and he says, the Egyptians are 19 miles south of Tel Aviv, we gotta stop them. So Lou says, well, uh, okay, we're gonna hit, we're hitting the desert, we're hitting El Arish tomorrow. He says, no, Lou, you don't understand. You gotta stop them right now, because if we don't stop them where they are right now, they're in Tel Aviv tonight, and that's the end of Israel. And Lou says, I can't do it, we haven't even t fired the guns, we don't know if these haven't pieces of shit will even fly, you know? So the guy says, you know, this, this was a phrase that I, or the term that I came to learn, ein brera, in Hebrew, no alternative. He says, ein brera. This is kind of this, one of the secrets of why the Israeli Defense Forces are so good. No alternative, you gotta get up and do it. So they took off for these guys. Lou didn't even know where they were going. He just got up in the air, one guy pointed, the second guy pointed, they went like so about Ezra two Whiteson minutes wasn't, he wasn't down the coast, yeah. and suddenly he saw. The Egyptian army, you know, backed up for, you know, like miles and miles. So they went into the attack and everything went wrong. The guns wouldn't fire, the bombs wouldn't drop. Lou somehow manages to get one bomb dropped in the middle and, you know, they strafed a few other places. But, and then they had to flee because they had no, no gas, no nothing. But the psychological impact of it was so strong on, on the Egyptian army that they, because they saw planes with the Star of David right. on the side. They'd never seen this before. Yeah, and they were told but, they had no Air Force. So right. Where did, so they, they must have panicked. They've been like, where did these planes come from? Right. 
and right. they thought they didn't know if these were the only four that, uh, <laughs> right? So that night, the Israeli intelligence intercepted a cable from the, uh, the, Egypt, the army commander to base, you know, saying, we have been heavily attacked by enemy air forces, and we are dispersing. And that was, and they did disperse, and Tel Aviv was saved, and Lou saved it. And to that, and today, that, there was a, a bridge where they stopped the man. They named the bridge Ad Alam, which means thus far and no farther or literally up to yeah. here, you know? So Lou today, when, when I went over to visit him in Israel, you know, he drove me by, you know, the place, you know, there, uh, <laughs> there that's the place. You know? <laughs> so that sort of uh, was my introduction to the frame of mind, the Ein Brera frame of mind. And, uh, um, Which filtered through, through the generations to the, the Six-Day War. Throughout right? the whole thing. So it sort of goes along with the concept of MIG killers yeah. and the concept of the death burst as, as uh, um, and this is kind of flowing into me as an American secular Jew, right? I wish somebody had taught me that when I was, you know, 14 right. years old. Right. Um, I'm kind of eating that up. That's like B vitamins going, going into my DNA, you know? Yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. really, it's really, and it, and it really makes you understand the, uh, the mindset over there. Why? They're so effective. Why, 19 years earlier, the Holocaust was happening. Yes. Suddenly, 19 years later, we got these guys that are like, literally, no you alternative. know, a match for any air force in the world. The Kavanaugh is the intention. You can no longer accomplish your objective. So you just bump it one level up to the Kavanaugh. Let me tell you something, tomorrow when the war starts, you can throw those plans out the window because nothing is going to be how you think it's going to be when the war starts.